So you're probably wondering how are interest rates going to affect the housing market in Utah and across the country? Now, I think there's going to be two different things that happen in this scenario. I think Utah is going to weather this storm a little bit differently than the rest of the country. And we're going to talk about some of that here in this video today. What's going on, you guys? My name is Cody. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, I talk about everything you need to know about what it's like to work, eat, sleep, live, and play here along the Wasatch Front. I also help people relocate here to Utah and buy, sell, and invest real estate here in this Salt Lake area and even across the whole state. Me and my team service the whole state. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this article here and uh, discuss a little bit about this uh, this little change that we've seen here. So this uh, headline reads, mortgage rates up. Here's how much home buyers will pay per month. The booming housing market has largely contributed to the U.S.'s economic comeback from COVID-19, but today the market is facing a cloud of uncertainty, says the National Association of Realtors. Housing kept the economy afloat as home prices rose and buyer demand intensified. Lawrence Yun said to real estate agents and industry experts during their 2022 meeting. However, this year has already thrown some curveballs, including record low inventory and unyielding inflation. So we've seen inflation go up pretty drastically over the, the last couple of months. And we've also seen record low inventory, like he said, in March, uh, February, and January, those first three months of the year, it was really, really low. And that caused a huge influx of demand in the market, uh, at least relative to how much inventory there was. While builders race to meet demand, supply is on the upswing, he said, but inflation and other factors like the war and escalating fuel prices continue to strain the market. The most immediate impact to home buyers this spring has been the spike in mortgage rates as the Federal Reserve has sought to temper uh, inflation. As part of its promise for aggressive action to staunch record high inflation, the, Fed, uh, the Federal Reserve bumped its benchmark lending rate half percent on Wednesday, the biggest incremental jump in 22 years. Today's mortgage rates. On Wednesday, Freddie Mac reported the average interest rate on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage is 5.27%, which is the highest in over a decade. This is kind of crazy that the interest rates are this high um, and how quickly they got there. I mean, if you were looking at a house even just three months ago, your interest rate was going to be in the low 3% range. So it's pretty crazy how quickly they've gone up and there's a lot of fear and uncertainty in the market and this is what's uh, driving those interest rates up. Mortgages now, compared to just a few months ago, are going to cost more money for home buyers. For a median priced home, the price difference is $300 to $400 more per month, which is a hefty toll for a working family. The, uh, the cost. Purchasing a home is now 55% more expensive than it was just one year ago. Rising mortgage rates and prices continue to strain affordability while wages are improving. Yun said that they have been wiped away because of inflation. Wages have risen 6% from a year ago, which is good news but inflation's at 8.5%. So your average consumer is actually coming out at a loss because of that inflation increase. Yun predicts, predicts inflation will remain up for the next several months and the housing market will see more monetary policy tightening through a series of rate hikes. As a result, he predicted the higher rates will slow the housing market, citing a five month decline in pending home sales, as well as a drop in newly constructed single family homes. I think this is a really good point because what's happening in this market here today, I just wanna talk about this for a second. What's happening is the prices have gotten so high and now interest rates are so high. There's a lot of people in the market who maybe are sitting on a lot of equity. You know, Maybe they bought their house for 400,000 a couple of years ago and now it's worth 600 or 650, maybe 700,000. And they might be looking at making a move, but now they're looking at eight or nine or even eight or nine hundred thousand dollar homes, maybe even a million dollar home to upgrade to. But they're also facing the risk of increased interest rates. So unless their income has gone up substantially or they've got some other money, they're going to not only be paying more for the house, but they're also paying substantially more on the interest rate, which is going to sh uh, scare a lot of buyers away from the market and therefore that's indirectly going to affect sellers as well because uh if you know a lot of people are going to say hey i don't want to give up my three percent interest rate and go get five percent and have to spend more for a house just to feel like i'm getting an upgrade a lot of people are going to sit tight and just stay where they're at i think the majority of people who are going to be moving in the next you know couple of years at least is going to be people who have to move right they got a new job they're relocating to a new area they got married they got divorced they they have big family you know something's happening that's actually causing them to need to make that move so i think that's going to be a big driver in the market going forward so what is the big picture heading into spring uh, national housing experts and economists have pointed to early signs that the nation's hot housing market is showing signs of cooling as inflation and the Fed's interest rate hikes continue to up the pressure. 
Experts have looked specifically at Western cities, especially Boise, for what they consider the top most overvalued housing markets. Moody's analytic chief economist recently predicted overvalued cities like Boise could see an up to 10% drop in prices as the market cools. So real quick guys, we're gonna pull up some statistics and actually take a look at what this looks like. Okay, so I've got this pulled up here on my computer. We're actually looking at some stats here for Salt Lake County here in Utah and what prices have done over the last couple of months. Now, we've looked at these charts before and I think this is something that's really, really important because if we're looking at potentially a 10% drop where in that article he was talking about that drop being part of, uh, that was for the Boise market, right? But let's say that Salt Lake is in a very similar situation. Let's say it's 10% just for uh, sake of uh, the, the, this example here. I think this is something that is uh, fairly realistic and of course, yes, Salt Lake has become overvalued but it's because so many people are moving here that it's really driving that demand here in the market. So the median sales price for last month in April was $530,000. That's all home types across everything in the county. This means that uh, if we took 10% off of that, let's say we take 10%, which is uh, $53,000. Let's just say 50,000 for you know round numbers here. And we bring that back here and look at what happened uh, just a couple months prior to that. That's where prices were. So even if we take 10% off of what this April number is, that still only brings us back to pricing of where we were at in January of this year. So literally three months ago, uh, you could have bought a house in January and then sold it in April and made a $50,000 profit in theory, right? On average. So uh, I don't think that that 10% drop is as dramatic as people might think. It's not going to be a crash. I don't expect 20, 30, 40% drop. I think that's uh, extremely unrealistic, at least at this point in time. I don't think that's going to happen. I could be wrong. I don't have a crystal ball, but I don't think that's going to happen. And even with a 10% drop, we're only going to see you know a retracement just a couple months really in the sales data. So a lot of people who let's say bought, you know, last summer or even two summers ago, right in 2020, they're going to still be sitting on a hundred thousand, hundred and fifty, hundred and seventy thousand dollars in equity on average. Some people are going to be even more just depending on the house. So that's pretty crazy to look at. Three Utah cities have also ranked in the nation's top 10 overvalued market close behind Boise. Those include Ogden with a 63% premium, Provo with 54%, and Salt Lake City with 53.8%. So basically the entire metro market, the entire Wasatch Front is sitting in this overvalued um, you know, premium. The thing I think they, they calculate that on is based off of um, how quickly those home prices rose, right? So they say, okay, here's your, your average price. It's supposed to increase 3% per year, but if it goes up more than that, then it's considered overvalued at that point. I believe that's how they do this research. I'd have to go into this article here and actually read that, but I've seen reports like that before and that's usually what it's like. So is there a bubble? Federal Reserve researchers have warned US housing prices have become unhinged from fun fundamentals, but they say it's not at all like the bubble that preceded the market crash and global financial crisis in 2007 and 2008. While prices are at record highs, experts don't see the same level of speculation that contributed to the Great Recession. Today's demand is real, they say, especially in rapidly growing states like Utah, which already faced a housing shortage far before the pandemic sent the national housing market into upheaval. Here in Utah, local experts have said rising mortgage rates will likely only slow, not stop housing price increases while pricing out even more potential home buyers. So with all that said, guys, I hope this article review was helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed my commentary along the way. If you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate here in Utah, make sure to reach out to me. I've helped people from all across the world relocate here, but I also help people here who are already local and are looking to make a move, whether they're buying, selling, moving out of state, investing, pretty much everything uh, we can do. So reach out to me. My information will be here on the screen. Call, text, or email anytime. I absolutely love it when you guys reach out and I can't wait to hear from you. And also before you go, consider sharing this video with a friend or a family member who might also find some value in this type of video. It'd really mean the world to me. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you in the next one.